Hey, Robert, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, just first on team news, as well as Martha Thomas, she was an early exit from the United game. Just a prognosis on her? Yeah, I mean, we, we took uh, no chances when she felt something in the game, so we took her off. Uh, she was uh, a part of the training today. Then we see if it's uh, possible to play on, on Sunday or if she needs to rest one game. Uh, so we, we will know that on Saturday. Um, Celine, uh, some issues with her foot, so she will probably not be in the squad this week, but hopefully back in training next week. Uh, and Drew Spence, also a little bit of a of a feeling during the game, so we, we will have to wait and see on Saturday if she's ready for this week or start training next week. And I just wanted to ask about the United game. Obviously, Grace wasn't in the squad, but Matilda Wimberg got a start. She was involved in both of the goals. What have you made of that performance as well as how she's progressed since joining the club in January? Yeah, I think her journey this three months has been brilliant, actually, because the first month she was new and she didn't really have the self-confidence to to do the stuff I know that she can. Uh, and she grown into it and, and then she have trained hard and taken the minutes she got and she did a good start against Leicester in the league. And then now I think she was one of the best players on the on the field. And, and not only being good, she also created points for the for the goal scorings. And I think uh, and we're happy with that, but especially when we cannot use other players. So this is the competition we want to have and the, uh, this is the journey we're going to have with young players who, who can grow into it and actually be really good players in, in this league. And just the last one for me, Robert, on Brighton. Obviously, Mikey Harris has stepped into Brighton at, a, at an interesting time with the, the departure of Mel Phillips. What have you made of their season and what have you made of him? I mean, I, I think they were quite good before that as well. So changing coach there was probably a decision built on something I don't know about. But I think he's coming in and they play a really good football and they try to have a... Uh, a football I like to see. They, they play with a, a lot of confidence. Um, but you also see them are new with some relations and some struggles. So I think we have a good chance to have a good game. But I am also like very much knowing that they have, if they have a good day, we're going to have a tough game. So we need to make sure we, we are sharp. Thanks, Robert. Good luck. Yes. James. Hi, Robert. Hi. Uh, obviously a disappointing late equaliser against United on Sunday. However, big contrast to the reverse fixture earlier this season. What's been the reaction of your players to the performance and the result? And how's morale in the squad? Uh, I think we were very disappointed directly after the game, of course. Uh, not only on the goal, I think the second half we became very low. We didn't really nail the press and we couldn't really have the build-up we wanted to have. So it's a mixture of the performance and, of course, that they scored. Uh, then when you just come back to the training ground and you realise that you had a, almost three points, but you get one point away against Man United, then you realise it's, it's, it's quite good result and it's a quite good performance overall. And it's a lot of good stuff in the second half, how we defend together, how we box defend and so on. Uh, we lost the other game 4-0, so it's a big uh, step there. So I think we realise that we're taking steps, we realise that we can compete against the top teams. It's nice to know before the final that we had this kind of a game where we know that we can both dictate part of the games, but also we need to make sure we can defend some part of the game. But overall a good feeling because you need to summarise it, what it is, and I think we did a, did a good performance. And um, with Brighton on Sunday, um, the away fixture there was right at the beginning of your time at the club. It was your first away win in the WSL. I was wondering, how do you reflect on the growth since then, both on and off the pitch, and yeah, the difference between coming into this fixture as opposed to the away one? Um, I mean, I think that was one of the first games of the season. Nobody expected us to win that game. Nobody saw us as favourites in that game. Uh, we are taking steps, uh, both in the and new place as well during the Christmas window and I think now uh, I kind of hope that people think that we are the favourites for this game because I want to we want to be a team that are a top team so I hope that people feel that but I have enormous respect that Brighton actually have some really good players and, and to say that we want to be a favourite in one game then we also need to show that we can do, deal with that so it's uh, let's see if we can actually dictate the game at our home stadium against Brighton but uh, on the other hand, they're used to a few spots below us in the table, so it's going to be an even game, of course. But um, I like the journey we have done, and I think we are ready to, to play some really good football against Brighton. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay, Julia. Um, just on that last note about the reverse fixture, so you guys won 3-1, but that was all the way back in October. You've talked about all the players you've added and the progress you've made. So how much can you really take from that reverse fixture and bring it here? This mm, nothing really. I mean, it's so long time ago and they have changed coach. We have changed uh, personnel. So we don't really look any clips from that game. We look at how they played the last few games, how we have played the last few games, what we need to improve in our game. So that game is kind of history. So we don't really need to do it. But we have good feelings from it. We have a few 
uh, happy goal scorers from that game I can remember as well. So we of course know that we did, did a good game against them, but this so far, you know, so long time ago. So we're going to make sure we have a good game plan and that we take the steps according to the Man United game and what we need to improve for this week. And then back to the Man United game, um, what were the biggest takeaways that you're going to take to the final in a couple weeks? Uh, I think you can see some of the players are in a really good uh, shape right now. Jessica Nass is shining when she plays. Matilda Winberg took a really good game, for example. Bethany adapted to a new role this game and she does so much good for this team. Uh, the build up, the place we have behind her. You can see a lot of good stuff in that game and we dare to do it against Man United away, which is very good. And also see that we are defending well when we need to defend. Uh, but I think we also need to improve so we don't defend too much in a game. We want to have the ball, we want to be an attacking team. So, But overall, it's like away game. Against, I think that was the first point ever we took against Man United away. So, I mean, you need to look at it in, in, that, in those eyes as well. But uh, overall, good performance. Thank you. Hey, Robert, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, you mentioned last week that there has been sustainable growth in the team's performance from the start of the season, and right now we're coming to the end of the season. Do you feel like uh, next uh, a goal for next season could be a Champions League qualifying spot for Spurs? Um, I hope so. I mean, uh, when, when, when they signed me and we discussed uh, these years I'm going to be here, I think the first year was everybody was like, we cannot just go for the Champions League first year. We need to just make sure we, we create a, a good uh, groundment to stand on how we play, how we build an identity. We are there now, top six. We are playing some good football. We compete against the top teams. But on the other hand, we also see this a lot of... Uh, it's a big gap between the top three, top four. Uh, and we have closed that gap. But they're also going to improve to next year. So uh, if we're going to compete for the Champions League next year, it's, it's like we don't know that we're going to try to do it but we're not really stressed about it either so if we don't really succeed next year then it's more important to make sure we close the gap even more so the the third year could be the champions league year so it's not like all or nothing next year to go for the champions league nobody here uh, expect that but we want to do it but it's more like okay the young players can they grow even more can we find a few really good summer signings could the place we have already now take the next step as well uh, and if everything works out well, yes, then we can compete. But um, we are more <laughs> we are here now, right now, and just want to make sure we end this season in a good way. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, moving to questions online. We'll go to Emily. Hi, Robert. I hope you're well. Um, I just have one question about scheduling, if that's all right. So the game is being played at the same time as the men's North London derby, um, and I can imagine a lot of Tottenham eyes will be on that game instead of Brighton. Um, I just wondered what you thought of that scheduling and, and what can be done to sort that issue out. I think it's very unlucky, of course. Uh, uh, you know, it's been the same when I was in Sweden when the, they then when they choose to play the, the games in the same time. But quite often, it's not we taking the decisions. It's the television companies, and they are, of course, also helping us a lot. So it's hard for us to just push everything to be according to our style. But it's not good for us because probably we will lose a few uh, fans at the stadium uh, and in the future we run and make sure that our fans can watch both the men's team and the women's team and I think we always try to push for that but we also respect the, the TV companies and how they need to find schedules for everything and Arsenal was in the Champions League and uh, if they were promoted who knows if they can move that game or so on but it's, you know we are a small part of a big system here in England so we just need to respect that as well but we're pushing everything we can to make sure we don't play in the same time as the men's team. Thank you. Best luck. Cheers. Thanks. Damien? Hi, Robert. Um, just one from me as well, uh, please. Obviously, you have something huge to look forward to in the, the Cup final. We have big games to play before then. How do you stop the Cup final becoming a distraction over this next couple of weeks? I think everything we, we work with uh, in the training ground, my leadership is about being present. That's the, one of the lead words we have and that's always focusing on here and now and what we should do. And also enjoy that we have something to look forward to. But everything we do is here and now. So the training is the most important thing right now and the game on Sunday will be the most important thing if you look at the game. And, and that's what we're working all the time. We, know we have yoga instructors doing yoga with the players. We, we make sure we have really good focus on here and now. Um, and if you can do that, then you can handle these games. So if you look at Man United away last week, we had a lot of uh, questions about the final and everything. And then we stepped into that game and did a really good performance. So I think the players show that they can handle both. And I think that's being a professional. And I think we have the players who can handle that. Thank you. Alex. Um, three matches left um, 
three of them against teams that you go into the matches as favourites. Are you at all looking at the point that you could potentially break the points record this season, or that is it still just all about performances? Um, I'm, I'm aware of what, what points we have and that we can actually have a, the highest points ever for this team and I'm aware that we can actually finish fourth which is the highest position in the table as well. On the other hand we don't really get too much about those points or that place in the table because you don't get the Champions League point, you don't get like a heavy a lot of money just to reach those points. So yes, I want to do it because it's nice to, to take steps in, the, in that journey. But on the other hand, I want to make sure we play even better football because that's what is going to take us to the, to the titles in the future. So we are more in f you know, focusing on how to play a really good attacking football against Brighton than taking those three points so we can make sure we get the, the highest score ever. But those come hand in hand. If you have a good performance, if you play very well football, you have a bigger chance to get those points and then I'm going to be happy with those points. But we're focusing on the performance more than the result right now. And you've got four midfield options in recent weeks with Evelina, Kit Graham, Drew Spence and Olga. Do you think your fans were perfect kind of like midfield partnership yet or is it all dependent on the team you're playing and the tactics? Um, it's not too much about who we're playing, it's more about how we look in all over the starting eleven and how they train and so on. And We also have Petzelberger who has done really good stuff in there as well. So we actually have five players who can, can dictate that position. Um, Drew Spence has been amazing when she came back from the injury. Olga started this season so good. Kit and Pess was doing a lot of good games when they were injured. So for me, it's make sure to try to have a good competition and find the right player for the right moment. And it's not always to start the game. It's, I think sometimes if you look at those positions, it's like Kit Graham has been on the bench a few games, which she probably played most minutes the last games because she's coming in and then it's overtime in the, in the, in the semifinal and the quarterfinal. So. Uh, that's the next step for this club, to have a lot of good players to make sure they can compete and, and handle that uh, because the top three teams have that. Uh, but they're doing it really good and they are really good characters who just push each other and help each other. So, And then I just need to find the right players for the right game, but they all are a, are a part of this journey. So I just need to find ways to motivate them and make sure they understand their role. Perfect. Good luck on Sunday. Cheers. We'll go to Dan. the scored 14 goals in three away games and the goals were shared across you know seven or eight different players so you know when they've got so many different goal threats does that make kind of the preparation different mm, not really i mean of course we know that terland is uh, their main scorer and she scored a lot of goals and how she scored the goals but <laughs> The main thing when you're focusing on the, the opponent, uh, opponent is more like how do they play? Do they have a certain pattern? Do they press high? Do they? How should we press their build up? Uh, where is the str strength they have and so on? So it's not so much about who's playing actually. And I think Brighton have a big squad. They're using quite many players uh, this year. So not really actually. We just want to focus on how we want to play and how we can hurt their their way of playing. I just want to ask about Elna Heaps, who obviously signed a new long-term contract. It feels that like you've got such depth in that goalkeeping department, obviously with Becky and Barbara as well. So what, what do you want to see from Eleanor in the future and how do you ultimately keep three really good goalkeepers happy? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I think Eleanor from day one to now has improved so much. So, so the first weeks you didn't know, OK, what level can she have? Uh, but working with Perry, the goalkeeper coach here, and, and her improvement here and a, a few long games as well, she's taken big steps. And I would say now she's actually competing with other two goalkeepers to be in the squad. And, and that's actually quite good development for this short time. Um, then you don't know for next season how we're going to end up with. But we're going to have three goalkeepers and we need to make sure they can handle the competition and everything. They're quite different, all the goalkeepers. And uh, some games you might need a different goalkeeper or whatever. But it's also about self-confidence and grow into these roles. And right now Eleanor is very keen to train and learn a lot and I think she the next step for her will be to compete and actually try to break into the squad and, and get minutes and uh, that's what we want in all positions but um, that's a later problem I would say to make sure I have a good plan to to make all of them happy which is impossible in one way but I can motivate them to to keep working and then we see what, how it goes. That's brilliant. Thanks, Robert. Best of luck for the weekend. Thank you. Cheers. Jerome. Hi Robert. You, um, you mentioned earlier about uh, the want to dictate the game. Um, you've 
against Leicester and Manchester United, you went behind um, in both games, and although you did come back uh, well, is that? I just wondered if, if that's something that you you're conscious about and that you've spoken about with the team this week about starting well. I mean, we actually came back a few games this year, so I'm not really concerned if we s if they score an early goal. Uh, Brighton did it as well when we played against them away. Um, because we can actually keep going because we really want to play our football, which is a strength and a show that we have character. I think the Leicester game, we started good for seven, eight minutes until they scored and then we didn't really play well until the second half. Man United, we started well and then they created that goal and have the momentum and then we came back and played some good football the rest of the first half. So we want to do the whole first half, we want to dictate the game, but we know that the, the opponent also want to do that. So. I don't really, really care about the goals in the game. We need to make sure we stay to the, to the play we want to do because if you do that for 90 minutes, you have a big chance to win the game. But you also need to make sure you find ways to win every game. And sometimes they score a goal, sometimes the, the ref do a, a bad call for us or sometimes we do mistakes. But you need to just keep focused and keep going. And that's what we're doing. And, and yes, we want to dictate the game more. We want to have a better start. And we don't want to receive goals in early games. But you do that sometimes and then you just need to deal with that. So I'm fine with, with that as well because I know the players can handle it. Stadium. I just we know that playing WSL matches at the men's stadium is, is massive for the sport. Having said that, you know Spurs women have only played um, one WSL fixture so far this season compared uh, to quite a few with Arsenal and Chelsea. And I just wondered, is that something that you would like to see increase going into next season? Is that something that you've been speaking about with both boards? Yeah, I mean, we, we had a plan this year to have a few more and then different, uh, you know, movement of games and so on didn't make it happen. Um, I was invited to the board meeting a few weeks ago discussing this and everybody's keen that we want to raise that and have more games there. And they showed it directly by adding the FA Cup uh, semi-final at the stadium. So I think everybody here wants to have more games there and we just want to make sure we, we grow organic with everything so we don't just go there and have every game there and we have an empty stadium. We want to make sure we have good, the right games to grow for it and then grow the fan base and grow the performance. And now this year is two excellent play games there, right? So. The plan is to keep going for that and then after this season we just need to make sure what games is the most important next year. Should we add all of them, half of them? You, you know, we, we're going to have a good plan but we want to do this the real way and, and that's what we're doing. Thank you, Roy. Good luck on the weekend. Cheers. Rachel. Um, I think Hammarby in Sweden have done something really amazing by bringing all their fans. Hammarby is a club uh, in Sweden, they go to all the games in men's football, women's football, handball, uh, floor, you know, ice hockey and everything. So they have a fan base to go to all the sports, which is quite unique. And when they build uh, the big games at that stadium, they are, you know, they are singing a lot in Sweden and they have this TIFO and everything. So. Of course, when you compare to that and where we are right now, I, I get it. But it's only them. It's not none, none other club in, in Scandinavia is doing that. It's quite unique. But I think it's a good thing because then you can bring that attitude here and make sure we grow. Because we are growing here. And I'm, I can tell you it's a lot more big than other teams in Sweden. It's actually better than most of the, some of the men's team as well. So yes, I like that attitude. And I think Matilda will bring that cool girl attitude to this club as well. Because she's, she's not afraid to speak out. And, and I like that. It's two ways to see it. I mean, I, I never promise anyone game time because it's uh, impossible. But you, when you recruit, you can make sure you recruit players with X factors that fits the way we want to play. I think the men's team is doing the same. They want to sign players who want to be here that fits the way we want to play. So when we find those players, we really want to make sure that they know their, their role, how they should compete. So uh, I'm quite honest in my talks with the, the next signings, how we see them 
if they are younger, you're going to compete directly. There's proof in this squad that you can actually play even if you're young or old, but you need to do the work and you might need time. You might take it directly. Uh, and then I just hope that they buy into that. And if they're not, then they, they shouldn't be here. So it's, it's quite easy, actually. And the only thing now is that we can actually pick and choose even more because more players want to come here and we can actually choose what kind of place we want to have. Um, before we might just chasing the players that were available, but now we can actually find different characters and then we can pick and choose even better. Um, on the other hand, it's, it's exactly the place like Matilda we want to have, who are ready to do, do the do work. And she didn't play too much in the beginning, but she, she knew that because we talked about it. And she's actually a, earlier than her schedule that's starting against Man United away. I thought perhaps she will not start any game until the next season, but she's ahead of her schedule and I, I, I like that. And just again, just in terms of recruitment, um, Eleanor got a three, three and a half year deal. Is, is your intention to try and sort of increase the length of the deal that players are getting who come to Spurs or who get re-signed? Yeah, I think um, the good thing for Hecken when I worked there was to sign long contracts with the young players because then you you have time to work with them and develop them. And if somebody want to buy them, they need to pay quite much money. Uh, the problem now is that yeah, I cannot get them. Uh, the main thing, we want to do the same here. So if we have young players with long contracts, we know that we're going to work with them for a long time. And so we can invest in them a lot of, uh, with, with time, with staff members and everything. And then we also know that if somebody want to buy them, we can actually uh, get a return of the investment. So I think, that, yes, we want to do that. And we want to make sure we have these players who want to be here for many years. So I think you will absolutely see more long contracts with the players we sign. Thank you, and good luck for Sunday. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. Hello, Robert. Of course, the FA Cup final tickets went on sale this week. They sold out immediately. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the tremendous support you're receiving from the fans at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I heard some rumor about it looks good with the tickets there, and I, I just think it's wonderful that the fans uh, is behind us and want to make sure that they support us at Wembley. So for me, it's like just a proof that we are building this uh, organic growth with the club together with the fans. And, and, you know, I just, it makes me so happy because when we were at the stadium the other week and, you know, 18, 19,000 singing and sharing and helping us to win that game. And when we go to the final now, the, the tickets is uh, it's a heavily that many want to watch that game. And I mean, it makes me proud because that's the, the main thing why we do this is for the fans. It's not for me or for the players. It's actually for them to, enjoy their club and, and so that's cool. Oh, sorry Chris, just on mute. We'll just unmute you again. Sorry Robert, following on from that, um, of course the Spurs women have a lot of international fans as well. Just wanted to get your thoughts on the men's team today announcing they're going to be going to Japan. Is that the kind of thing you would like to do in pre-season in the future of the women? I think you, you need to look at this as a, both a football club, but also to make sure we, we grow with our fan base. Uh, I know that we have fans all over the world. I know the men's teams normally go on different um, parts of the world. And I think, of course, we're going to do that with the women's team as well. But once again, we are very young as a women's club. And I think we, we just need to take every step in the right order. So we don't just follow the men and do everything what, as the men's do. We, we're going to make sure we do everything in the right order. And yes, we're going to brand ourselves. We're going to probably go on, on, on different trips in the future. Uh, who knows already next year? But the main thing is we don't need to just do exactly the same as the men's team doing now. We need to grow step by step. And in the future, we're probably going to see fans all over the world. And we're going to go on tours all over the world. But one step at a time. Thank you, Robert. Good luck. Cheers. Okay, thank you very much.